We just finished up building all the control surfaces for the Dark Era 1, so I'm holding one of the ailerons. And behind me, I have the rest of the control surfaces. The elevators, flaps, and the rudders. If you've been following along, you've seen that we are pretty obsessed with trying to predict the weights of our parts, uh, weighing our parts as we finish them, and then publishing those weights. So of course, after finishing up the control surfaces, I was going through and weighing all the parts and documenting the weights. So I'm gonna throw the weights up on the screen here and I wanna take a look at some of these numbers. Now just looking at these numbers isn't gonna mean a whole lot, but when you compare the numbers from left to right, you see something interesting. Specifically, it's the difference between the numbers left to right. And as I was looking at this, I got to thinking about something that I haven't seen many people talking about, which is repeatability. So when you look at discussion about carbon fiber parts or structures, you'll hear lots of talk about, oh, this is my fiber to resin ratio, or this is how much the part weighs, or look how shiny this carbon fiber is, but there's no real talk about repeatability. Repeatability is basically, if you're trying to make the same part more than once, can you make the same part over and over again, exactly the same every single time? I won't get into all the reasons as to why repeatability is important, but the two biggest reasons for us that are important is one, if you can make the same part exactly the same every single time, it means you're gonna scrap less parts, and also, it's going to mean that the parts that you do make are going to perform as intended. Okay, so back to my control surfaces. Uh, because they're mirror images of each other, they should be the same weight. So technically, maybe this isn't true repeatability because they're not the same exact part, but because they're a mirror image, uh, the principle still kind of applies. So I've got the weights again up on the screen now, and this time I'm including the difference in weight from left to right. Let's talk through some of the sources of this variation so we can understand why we did so well on the ailerons and why we had a little bit more variation in the rudders. The best of all these in terms of variation is our ailerons, which I'm holding one of them here. And I see four main sources for differences in weight. They are fiber to resin ratio, amount of adhesive that we're using, your variation in your density of your core materials, and then something I call your core to resin ratio. The first reason that I mentioned the fiber to resin ratio requires a little bit of explanation of the manufacturing process to understand. So most of the weight of the aileron here is made up of the weight of the skin. The skin starts out as a section of raw carbon fiber cloth that looks like this. So the cloth is all floppy like this initially. We place this into a mold and then saturate it with an epoxy resin which then cures and becomes hard which results in the end skin structure like you see here. The amount of epoxy resin that this dry carbon fiber cloth soaks up has a big impact on the final weight of the part. So if you have variation in your resin content in the cloth it's going to give you variation in the weight of your final part. Luckily the process that we use called infusion has very good repeatability in terms of the amount of resin it soaks up. So that's not a huge impact on the total weight variation. Since most of the aileron is made up of infusion manufactured carbon fiber, we get a very repeatable weight. The main source for variation in weight between the left and the right ailerons probably comes from the adhesive that we use to bond the ailerons together. So the aileron is built up from multiple smaller pieces that join together to form this assembly. So there's a top and a bottom skin, and then there's a bunch of ribs internally, and they're all bonded together with adhesive. That adhesive is applied by hand. Just the human error of applying the adhesive and then bonding it together introduces error or variation between the left and the right side. The flaps and the rudders don't have quite as good of weight repeatability as the ailerons and elevators, and that's because their construction is a little bit different. The rudders and flaps are molded in one section with a piece of foam core inside them. This is one of the rudders, and you can see it has a little bit of thickness to it. That thickness comes from the foam core that's in here. The foam core in the flaps and rudders introduces two more factors into the weight repeatability, which is the variation in the foam core density and the core to resin ratio. Foam core actually has variation in its density. If you look at the data sheets for most foam core manufacturers, they'll publish that the foam core can vary in density by plus or minus 10%. So this can add up to a couple grams on the foam core for something like the rudder. The last factor that I mentioned was the core to resin ratio, which is basically how much resin does this foam core soak up during the infusion process. 
So there's a little bit of resin required to wet the foam core and adhere it to the carbon fiber skin. That can vary from part to part, which introduces variation in your final part weight. So those are the four biggest factors that I see affecting the weight variation on our parts. Now that we've talked through all this, what does it mean? How do we compare to other processes or other aircraft? I don't know, because I don't hear anyone talking about this, so this is where you guys come in. If you're building a kit airplane, or building anything for that matter, that requires you to build two of the same part, or parts that are mirror images of each other, I want to hear about your results. I'm really curious to hear from all sorts of different construction types. Hopefully we can get some numbers from riveted aluminum planes, steel tube and fabric aircraft, other composite aircraft. So to get started, I went and weighed the final rudders, elevators, and ailerons on my Cozy. This is one of the rudders right here. And these are the numbers that I got. The thing to notice is there's a little bit more variation in these numbers versus the weights on the Dark Arrow. This is mainly because the Cozy is manufactured with a wet layup process versus our infusion process for the Dark Arrow. The other source of variation on my Cozy is that all the geometry of these parts is either made by hand or with templates, whereas all the geometry on the Dark Arrow is determined by CNC machine. That's my discussion on repeatability. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.